Welcome to this tutorial video. I will show you some easy ways to improve your pipetting skills and avoid problems. These techniques can help you get better and more reproducible results. And that's what science is all about. So, let's get started. First, it's important to get the immersion depth right. In general, you should immerse as little as possible to prevent the transfer of liquids on the outside of the tip. However, you also need to immerse deep enough to avoid taking up air instead of liquid. The right immersion depth depends on the volumes you're working with. This table shows the correct depth for each volume. You don't have to memorize it now. You can always come back to this section of the video. Our second topic is the pipetting angle. When aspirating liquids, you need to hold the pipette as vertically as possible. I will show you why this is beneficial with a series of eight samples. Whoops! There we go. The more you tilt the pipette, the more variations you will get in a series of samples, since hydrostatic pressure in the tip changes with the angle. The more you tilt the pipette, the more liquid you'll dispense. It's difficult to control this effect, since the variations are too small to see with the naked eye. For best results, just keep the pipette as vertically as possible. Okay, now let's move on to the two most common manual pipetting techniques. Forward pipetting and reverse pipetting. Whoops! Now watch the pipette tip on the left as I move the button on the right. With forward pipetting, press the operating button to the first stop. Immerse the tip and move the operating button up to the rest position. Dispense the liquid by pushing the operating button down to the second stop. Reverse pipetting works better for certain liquids and pipetting challenges. Push the operating button down to the second stop. Immerse the tip and move the operating button all the way up. Dispense the liquid by pushing the operating button down to the first stop. Some liquid will remain in the tip. You can discard it or return it to the aspirating vessel. With reverse pipetting, you can greatly improve your results when working with problem liquids. Let's look at three categories of problem liquids and see how we can minimize the problems they cause. The first category is viscous liquids. These liquids do not flow as easily into or out of the pipette tip. If you use an air cushion pipette, be sure to pipette slowly and use reverse pipetting. Using a positive displacement dispenser is an even better way to deal with this problem. Second, foaming liquids are difficult to pipette accurately, especially if they were moved or shaken before pipetting. If you use an air cushion pipette, we recommend that you use reverse pipetting to minimize foaming problems. A positive displacement dispenser is even better since it offers you perfect control. Lastly, very cold liquids influence the air cushion in the pipette. If you pipette very cold or very hot liquids frequently, you should adjust your pipette accordingly. Again, the use of a positive displacement dispenser minimizes this problem. As you can see, pipetting is more complex than it looks. A lot of factors can influence your pipetting, and by extension, your scientific results. We have summarized the most important points in this infographic to help you get the best results when pipetting. Thanks for watching this video, and I hope your new pipetting skills always bring you awesome results. The infographic shown is part of Eppendorf's series of Stay Informed Infographics, available for download at eppendorf.com slash stayinformed.